What's up guys, it's Nathan here. Today, we're gonna shed some light on the major shakeup we're seeing in the financial world. We're gonna dive into the dramatic transformation in the Australian mortgage market as the big banks reel from fierce competition and the end of the most aggressive mortgage pricing war we've seen in a long time, as well as the implications of rising interest rates on homeowners across Australia. It was barely a month ago we witnessed a fierce mortgage war as major banking players like NAB, ANZ and Westpac all vied for new customers. Their chief executives confess the intensity of competition, branding it as the toughest they'd seen and encountered in years. Shane Elliott from ANZ, Ross McEwen from NAB and Peter King from Westpac found themselves at a loss how to navigate these turbulent waters. McEwen speculated that it was only time that would bring the end of this situation. Interestingly, the dynamics have already started to shift, as observed by Brendan Sprowless from City. The competition has already started to see a sudden downturn, with most of the big banks discarding their cashback schemes that were previously employed to lure in new borrowers. But the evaporation of these incentives isn't the only transformation the mortgage market is experiencing. If you find value in this video, please consider hitting that subscribe button as it really does help out the channel. And a big thank you to all our subscribers for your support inspires us to create more content we hope you enjoy. Historically, there's been a difference in new loans known as front book and existing loans known as back book. This gap has narrowed over the last 18 months as banks offer discounts to attract new customers and keep their existing clientele, particularly during the surge of low-cost fixed-rate mortgage refinancing that occurred during the pandemic. Browless suggests that this disparity is reverting to its standard 0.3% differential. This begs the question, what sparked these changes? For most of the past year, the banks have lamented about issuing mortgages below the cost of capital, even while doing precisely that. Sprowless believes that this is more of a distraction. The real change lies in the cost of funding. Throughout the previous year, banks managed not to pass on the full impact of interest rates to depositors, primarily because they benefited from low cost loans made available through the Reserve Bank during the pandemic under the term fund facility, short for TFF. This allowed banks to aggressively pursue mortgages whilst boosting their net interest margins due to substantial profits from depositors. However, as the term fund facilities draw to a close, banks face more pressure from seeking funds from depositors. Moreover, the instability in global banking liquidity, as exemplified by the downturn in Silicon Valley Bank and Credit Suisse Bank, banks are now leaning towards more conservative funding methods. This situation led to a change and it ended the most aggressive mortgage pricing war that we've seen in a long time, which primarily featured post-COVID period. As Sprowler suggests, the tightening in deposit markets and the recent role of depositors in reducing the mortgage pricing thus far signals the end of the broader and intense mortgage competition we've seen since post-COVID. While banks can now safeguard their margins, they lose the upper hand they had over non-bank lenders. Browless foresees better competition, possibly for both Liberty Financial Group and Pepper Money, which were underperforming in the past year as they can now match banks more effectively. In an unprecedented prediction, Westpac's Peter King has also raised concerns about the potential for a spike in mortgage defaults among Australians in the coming years. King attributes this grim outlook primarily due to raising interest rates, which, in his words, are a blunt tool. He further reveals that the bank is keenly monitoring borrowers who have borrowed to their maximum capacities, thus putting themselves at a high risk of financial defaults. SMQ's latest research shows a concerning increase in properties sold under distressed conditions. March 2023 alone saw a rise in distressed selling activity, particularly in New South Wales, Victoria and Queensland, with distressed listings in New South Wales escalating by 68% within a year from March 2022 to 2023. In light of these developments, SMQ states that the Australian real estate market continues to struggle amidst economic uncertainty, leading to residential properties being sold under distressed conditions. The Reserve Bank Governor has repeatedly stated that further tightening in the cash rate might be needed, especially if 
inflation isn't coming back down to target levels. He's also stated that he'd be willing to pause interest rate increments to allow the economy to evaluate and further see how things roll on amidst the uncertainty that we're seeing. Philip Lowe has consistently affirmed that the Reserve Bank's commitment to meet its inflation target and that they would do what is necessary to get there. And remember to like, share and subscribe to stay informed with all the latest finance and property news. So that's it for today, guys. Here at Hunter Galloway, we're mortgage brokers and deal with people Australia-wide. So if you're looking for assistance, feel free to reach out with us at huntergalloway.com.au. You can fill in the contact form or call us directly on 1300 08 065 and we'll see you next time.